Hello. And we are here today just to do a nice um, television show for you with a bunch of information and good stuff. So I have here today two guests uh, with me. And um, we're going to be talking about different aspects because we know there's so much that is going on in the city of Brockton at this point, not just in the city of Brockton, globally. And there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of things going on. And for that reason, I have here today um, Lucy Chavez. Lucy, she is a very good friend. We've known each other for um, very several years, going back high school. We went to school together. I know her family. I know everybody. So she's a good friend. And she also, she works over at Brockton Neighborhood Health Clinic. And um, she's doing a phenomenal job with the community, especially during these times of a uh, crisis. So she's there in the front lines, and I'm, I'm very proud to know that she's really helping out the city. So she's gonna have a bunch of nice information to give us, because I know it's a lot of time of anxiety. So say hello, Lucy. <laughs> hello, hi, Brockton. I love you guys all, I really do. <laughs> yes, um, Lucy is awesome. And then our next guest is also someone that I've also have um, relationship with for going back to several years because we work together in the same law office in Brockton. So even when I started law school, I've started there and he's been my mentor since. So it's attorney Jack Riordan. So he's been active in Brockton forever. He was born in Brockton, graduated from Brockton High School, has his law office there for over 30 years, really active in the community, doing a lot of pro bono services. And he is going to be here today just answering questions about what to do legally on situations when, unfortunately, these situations arise. So, Jack, you can say hello to our viewers. Hello, Brockton. It's nice to... Uh be here this evening, this afternoon. Yes, awesome. Okay, so Lucy, tell me a little bit uh, what you do there at Brockton Neighborhood and what are the main things that you're seeing? Because once the year starts, let's say 2020, what do people do? They do their New Year's resolution. So maybe you make your plans. You're like, okay, so this is a new year. I saved up my money and I'm going to be buying my house this year. So it's my dream to have be a homeowner. So I'm ready. I'm doing that this year. Or my child, my son, he's the first one who went to college in a family. So he's finally going to get to graduate this year. So there's all these plans. And then before, what do you know? Oh, yeah, come March, I lost my job. So all the money that I had saved up for that, now I'm pretty much barely surviving. So the dream house that I plan to buy, then maybe that's going to have to wait for another few years and see possibly when that will happen. And my son, my child, my daughter, who finally graduated from college, graduated from high school, that we thought that we were going to have, you know, this nice graduation, yeah, that also has been canceled. So how does that really affect the community and society, not knowing what's going on, not knowing when will this will end. Just just share with us what you've been seeing every day at your uh, work out there. Um, first of all, I wanna say thank you one more time um, for the invitation. It's always a pleasure uh, to to meet you, to talk to you. you. You live in my heart, so it's a pleasure. Um, so, uh, yes, I am a LH LMHC, which is licensed mental health counselor. I work at Brockton Neighborhood for almost three years. So, as you know, Brockton Neighborhood is well known about like helping, uh, especially uh, different cultures, because we do have an uh, amazing interpreter service. And also we do, uh, we do have a, a something that most of the places that they don't know, which is we call BHI, which is, uh, uh, which is we integrated like uh, the, the physician, right? The primary care with the mental health department. So uh, for example, if you go to your regular physical and, and for some reason you are feeling depressed, you are not doing well, and your physician noticed that, 
So he's going to call one of our social workers and she will connect, she will assess you. She's going to uh, have a very nice talk to you and she will assess you and she will decide if you're going to continue uh, um, the program, which is, so she's going to make the referral to me, to us at the uh, mental health department. So, so the other question that you asked, yes, you're right. So you just, you know, I was just listening to you. It was already like feeling frustrated. Yes. So yes, you're right. So people make plans and uh, especially here that uh, we needed to be more um, planful, like we needed to plan things ahead. Uh, yes, there's so much frustration. There's so much anxiety there that, that, you know, that there's so much going on and not just that grieving as well. Like, you know, well, I think we grieving, we lost our routine. We lost our, um, uh, financially now we're talking about financial, like being stable financially, as you said, like, you know, I don't have a, a job right now. I don't, I don't know how am I going to provide to my kids? Yes, there's a lot of anxiety and we've seen this every single day. Uh, we're doing visits um, over the telehealth program, which is awesome. It's working so well. So we can uh, reach uh, out our patients through the Zoom or uh, uh, phone calls and just to check if they need anything, if they need a support and, and we are able to provide the resources that they need at the time and just to order to, to just decrease the anxiety or the need. But you're right, there's uh, so many, so many things uh, going on uh, right now. Yes. And, um, because there's so much that is going on in society, in the community, what tends to happen is that unfortunately, there are an additional spike of um, domestic violence um, cases, because I know people are now confined in their homes 24 seven, pretty much with their family members. And that has never happened before. You know, either the husband would be working all day, he would come home later at night. Now they're quarantining themselves by staying at the homes all day with their families. And unfortunately, um, possibly because of anxiety or, or not knowing what to do, maybe they're drinking too much and then the increase of domestic violence happens. So I wanted to hear from attorney Jack Ridden to let us know a little bit more about that, what you've been seeing in your workplace in dealing with people and having access to the courts. The courthouse is closed until June 1st. So how have, can people still get help? How, how can people still be able to make sure they are protected, they are safe, even though when things are pretty much closed and it's so much harder to really um, get through? So what, um, Jack, please. <laughs> hey, thank you very much, Rita. And, um, it's, uh, you know, I want to thank you again for inviting me on today. Yes, it's one of this, as this COVID-19 uh, pandemic unfolds, you know, the courthouses aren't open all the time. And what do you do if you, um, transitioning from what was said earlier, what do you do if you have some issues, you're, if you're a victim of domestic violence, uh, how do you deal with that? How do you access justice in the court system? And, uh, you know, what I like to do is like talk a little bit about that. So basically, if you are having an issue, uh, you can call the courthouse. You, when you call the courthouse, they will give you a number, which is called Safe Plan. Safe Plan will assist you with filling out a affidavit for a restraining order. Or you can call the courthouse and they will mail you, email you a link. You can fill out the affidavit to help yourself uh, in preparing for a restraining order. If you are unable to do that because you don't have a computer, you can call the courthouse and the clerk, which is assigned in Brockton District Court, will assist you over the phone in filling out the affidavit. Once that is done, they will mail you a, um, a, a link. You can uh, print the document and sign it if you have a computer. If not, the clerk will attest to the affidavit. They will call you and they'll set up a meeting on the phone with the judge and you'll go before the judge on a video conference or on a telephone conference. And when that is happening, the judge will hear what you have to say and you can have a restraining order issue to protect you if you're a victim of domestic violence. 
It's important for people to understand that although the court is not open, you can do that by telephone. If it's during the evening, then the best thing to do is call the police department and it's the usual procedure. The police department would contact the judge and assist you in obtaining a restraining order. Yeah, so that is very good, uh, important information to know. So even though the courthouse is closed does not mean that they don't have any relief. It, it just means that it, things get different. But so it's good to know. Now, Lucy, tell me, do you see that to be true also in the mental health department, an increase of people, of unfortunate victims that are in need of um, your services to be there to help them and to even tell them, make sure you go to the police, make sure you report this, make sure you protect yourself. What, what have yeah. you been? Yeah. That's, yeah. Correct, That's correct, Tavita. That's correct. Uh, we are actually, we are uh, filing so much 51 A's and um also we section people uh just because you know people are really uh getting out of control so um yes for domestic violence we do have a team that also can help you to connect through all this process uh, and uh, of course if you reach out your providers uh, we do have a team that helps you but this is this is true this is something that before the crisis uh the authorities already mentioned that like that they will increase but we didn't know how much and 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 i i i was doing my research it's over a 50 percent so it's a lot not just the domestic violence also um um the addiction this is also another problem because addiction leads to crime right so uh also we are section people because uh they are um out of control so uh, people are also depressed um and and i, I think i think it's uh, as a, i saw uh yesterday on facebook like i don't know if you saw the iceberg uh, iceberg like i don't know if it, you saw that picture like covid 19 on top and mm -hmm. like you know what i mean in the bottle like all this like uh, depression anxiety addiction uh domestic violence i think it's a snowball i think we're going to start to, to not just seeing this because as the iceberg, iceberg is like you can just see like a little bee because it's above water this is what you see is just the virus but if you go under you're gonna see uh, what are the other problems right will come um because of this so definitely it's something that we see a lot uh and i recommend you to reach out your providers right to, to help you if you don't have especially an immigrant uh uh population what happened is uh the woman usually she because she's so she feels so helpless in her home country so sometimes she doesn't want to uh expose herself here because she assumes right that she has no help she's she's she has no support but that's not true uh there's a huge system to help you in protect you, not just to you, but your family as well. So I do recommend that if you are going through uh, domestic violence right now, please uh, follow the uh, Jack's uh, instructions. And if you uh, don't know how to make that call, if you feel uh, uh, like more um, safe with your provider, please reach out your provider and he will direct you to the right uh, uh, places to get help. Yes, um, Lucy, let me just tell you something. What would be the procedure once someone is found um, to be positive that they tested positive with the virus so i know that brockton we um we finally have the tent over at brockton high school and i have the flyers with the instructions with the phone number that's going to be showing on the screen too in different languages so that people would know the steps but i know you're in the front line and i know that you um also working very closely so just 
talk like what can they do once they are found to be positive and also a little bit about the stigma behind it because the reality is that this virus is not choosing you know, social class, not choosing color, it's not choosing, uh, not picking choosing what you would think your normal sense of things are. But I understand that in a lot of communities, the difficult reality is that it could have some stigma behind it. So I know that a lot of people, they're concerned, they don't want to get tested, but just talk a little bit about the importance of making sure that people go, they get tested and they follow the instructions of quarantine themselves and things like that. So if you could just please elaborate sure. on that and instruct people so that way they would know. Um, sure. what, yeah. So the first thing that you write, right? So if you if you positive, so that means that you got tested, right? You know that you're positive. So please follow the instructions. Stay home. Stay home because that way you're not just protecting uh, your family, right? If you isolate, you isolate yourself, but also you're protecting the community. What you said about stigma? It's really serious because what happened because i'm dealing this with every single day because of many reasons many reasons of uh, sometimes it's just because they don't want to, to just be positive they know they have the virus they have all the symptoms but they don't want to go and uh and, and and have this as a result because they are ashamed or they are like they don't want to expose themselves that they have the virus, right? So uh, it's hard because there are some cultures that they do not go f just to, to see a regular providers because they don't wanna know that they have like, for example, high blood pressure. Can you imagine if they have a, like a virus that they needed to stay home for 14 days? So definitely something that you needed to be aware because uh, maybe you're not having that many symptoms. Maybe you're not showing that many symptoms. Maybe uh, you just, um, you're feeling okay, right? But the thing is, you don't know what about your neighbor. You don't know if you're going to work and you're gonna pass the virus to someone that they don't have uh, like a good immune system as you. And of course, in they're gonna spread to maybe the parents or the grandparents, right? I think it's so important, so important that you realize that you need to uh, be mindful about this. Another thing that also, uh, it, it's, it's a barrier, I would say it's the financial part, right? So the financial part, I think it's so important because what happened is, okay, I, if I know, if I go and I get tested and I get positive, right, what am I going to do? If I'm essential work, if I have to work, if I need, if I, if I have to provide to my family, that's the only thing that I have right now, what am I going to do if I get tested positive? You know what I mean? So there are so many reasons, right, yeah. that, uh, that it's stopping people to get tested and it's stopping, it's stopping people to to um, also stay home and, 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 and just uh, uh, stopping the, the spreading. Yeah. So I think maybe Jack can help us, like maybe uh, get having resources, uh, especially for uh, people that don't have a job right now. And I, I do have, I have some people that they reported to me, Lucy, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but uh, you know, I, I I have to provide. If I don't provide for my family, what am I gonna do, right? So this is another thing so important that we need to talk about it because I think if you have a resources, I think you just you know you decrease your anxieties if you have the support. Well, yeah. Unfortunately, we yeah. don't know. It's a, it's a good point uh, that you mentioned because I do think that the number one concern that people have at this point is how to provide for my family. So exactly. what I want to ask um, for Jack is if people, our a lot of people, our um, residents of Brockton, they are the essential workers. They are the ones on the front lines. They are the ones working, you know, in grocery stores. They are really the one caring for the elderly at nursing homes. So they are the frontline workers. So if they get 
uh, tested positive as a result of the type of work that they do, can they at that point collect, you know, workers' comp benefits um, because that would probably be an injury at work. So how is that working? How is the law being able to catch up with the current trend that it's happening with the well, current times and this COVID-19, this pandemic? So yeah, Jack, what can you tell us about that and what have you seen? That's a good question. Generally, the law does already account for this. If you're in the course of your employment, you're a first responder and you contract COVID-19, and you can and you have medical documentation to that, certainly it's a workers' compensation claim. If you're an EMT, a police officer, a firefighter, and you've contracted the COVID-19, you're entitled to uh, workers' compensation. If you're an EMT, there's a little different statute that covers police officers, but certainly you're covered. Rita, I'd just like to jump back for a minute because I unfortunately got disconnected earlier. I just like to go over back, jump back to the domestic violence aspects of what's going on today because of the closure of the courthouses, courthouses not being open to the public to walk in. And I just wanted to make clear uh, exactly how to obtain a restraining order. Basically it unfolds into two, two aspects. One is at night, if it happens at night after business hours, you can call the police station and the police will assist you in obtaining a restraining order, you will obtain a 10 day temporary restraining order and by yourself, ex parte. Then down the road in 10 days, both parties can appear on a telephone or video conference and they can have their due process and uh, state their positions. If it's during the day and you call the courthouse, they're gonna either A, assist you in filling out an affidavit, B, turn, give you a number in the courthouse to an entity called SAFE, plan, safe plan will uh, assist you in obtaining a restraining order, uh, or B, they'll send you a link and you can fill out the documentation yourself, send it back to the courthouse. The courthouse at that point will set up a, an emergency restraining order with the judge. It's ex parte, which means the victim speaks. The other side at that point is not there. They'll give you a 10 day restraining order. And then at that point, uh, the person against who the restraining order is sought can appear and have their due process and state their side of the story. But I wanted to convey to the public that even though the courthouses are closed in the sense that you cannot walk in, people do have access to justice and victims of domestic violence are able to obtain restraining orders and uh, protect themselves. Yeah, and that is good to know. And also the other thing that I wanna add to that is that um, although you, have, you still have access to the courthouse, uh, for evictions right now and foreclosures, the housing court at this point is not accepting uh, any applications to do uh, to evict someone. So if the landlord, if the landlord, the the tenant is not paying the rent and would like to evict, at this point there's a hold and they cannot do that. But then um, that does not mean that the money that you have not paid is forgiven. It means that you're gonna to have to pay it eventually, but not during this pandemic. You're gonna have some time. So, Jack. Rita, Rita. Yes. I do have a question in this matter. So uh, uh, is my patient came to me and then she was, so she has a mortgage, right? So she was kind of uh, like, what am I going to do? I know they let me, right, to, to let's say, be on hold for two months. But on the first uh, whatever month, let's say that they on hold for April and May. So June 1st, they have to pay the full amount. If they don't pay the full amount, they can make like a make a, make a like a plan or something like that, right? Like to 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 help them. I, I get this. My question is, are they going to be reported to our credit? Like that Good was question. the question. I'll answer, if I could chime yeah. in on this. Yeah. Well, first of all, yeah, yes, an eviction and foreclosure moratorium is now in effect in Massachusetts, which was passed by the legislature due to the COVID-19 pandemic and signed by the governor. And this is what you really need to know. Most evictions and foreclosures are basically now on pause. And there's a new law in effect. The moratorium uh, is in effect at least until the emergency uh, is lifted. The, in regards to your specific question regarding credit, there is a procedure and that was addressed in the law 
that if you can fit, if you are facing foreclosure due to the fact of something, an issue related to the pandemic, you can fill out an affidavit. <clears throat> Sorry about that. You fill out an affidavit, and by providing that within 30 days uh, to the consumer reporting agencies, and it will not affect your credit or it shouldn't affect your credit. So landlords are barred from charging tenants also uh, fees, late fees, non payment fees, and from providing credit data to consumer reported agencies. Uh, if renters within 30 days of the missed payment can provide documentation that the non-payment was due to a COVID-19 related illness. Yeah, and that is great information. Thank you so much. So um, our time, we have um, five more minutes left. So I'm just going to be, now we're going to be um, just pretty much saying our final words to our viewers. But what I wanted to say is those people who are testing positive, they're going to be getting a phone call from the state, which on your caller ID is going to read MA COVID team. And I've had um, the people to put it on the screen so that people would know. Please answer the call because that call is going to give you very important information on how to quarantine yourself, how to protect your family members, making sure that we stop the spread of the disease. Because at this moment, we need to get it under control. I don't want to keep getting reports. I just want to add one something. Ahead. It's yes. just adding what you said. Uh, you're going to receive that call, but if you're from Brockton Neighborhood Health Center, we do have a team also that is going to be calling you, and not just the physicians and nurses, but we're going to have a, a behavioral health team that it's, it's ready to give you a support, emotional support, if you are positive, if you test positive. Thank you, Lucy. So say your goodbye to our viewers. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Jack, what were your final words you'd like to say for the city of Brock and all of our residents and all the people out there who are so concerned and worry about this? What would you? You know, I love Brockton, having grown up here and work every day, I'm very concerned about the people of Brockton, especially those people that work in nursing homes. Uh, they have a very difficult job. We're located, Rita and myself and Attorney Jeff Thompson are located at Lawyers Corner, 403 North Montello Street. If you have any questions, drop by by telephone and give us a call on any of these issues that we discuss, foreclosures, if you're facing eviction, facing foreclosure, or if you believe that you're a victim of, the, or you are a victim of domestic violence, give us a call and we would gladly assist you in obtaining and uh, protecting yourself. And thank you both of you for being here. And so that way you're providing good information to our residents. I know that during these times, there's a lot of scams out there. So I even received uh, an email from the city stating that National Grid, uh, there's some scammers out there that are calling on behalf of National Grid, demanding people to pay. And if they don't pay, it was gonna shut off their um, bill. So that is not true, it's a scam because even the utilities, they are, they're not shutting off your utility bills and things like that. So be aware of all these things that are going on. And we just wanted to provide you some good, reliable information, letting you know you're not alone. You're here. We are here with you. So feel free to give me a call, 781-964-1567. That's my cell phone number. Just feel free to give me a call. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you and the city of Brock and we're here together. We're here to really partner up with one another in making sure that we get through this pandemic together. Thank you so much for watching. It was a great pleasure being here. Thank you, Rita.